Are you this Larry Davis all the chicks are talking about? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they call me once again. <laughs> 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 I lost your number. Please call me. <laughs> Shove it in the side of that fucking opening of that piercing, and I'm pushing and I'm pushing, and out the other side, boom! Probably about the size of this fingernail was a fucking black watermelon seed. No. It was nothing but fucking hair. Yeah. Over the oh, years it up? that it collected over that ring, yeah. and when it would like go through head, the piercing, like giant, and it kept, it kept, head. well, it wasn't a blackhead, it kept yeah, kind, kind of. ripping the hairs off of the fucking jewelry. And it just, and it kept, together, and it kept and pressing together and pressing really together. Hot. Well, I never thought that, What's you know, it, it well, like? I you never, it? I <laughs> what did it I'm like, did you save it? You're like, no, what did it taste no. like? That's my one regret. I didn't save it at the time. Or I taste was, it. I wish I would did have. Did you taste it or No, it? but I did show the guys and they were like, that's fucking gross. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, I was like, I just gave birth. What do you mean it's gross? I'm like, I gave birth to a watermelon seed, and it was, but it was hair. And it was was it a baby hard, dreadlock? Hard as was a, it a baby dreadlock? Yes, hard as a fucking, <laughs> hard as a bass guitar pick, man. You get to play guitar with this thing. And for some reason, I threw it away, and I wish I wouldn't have wished it was in a jar. But it's yeah. not. But it, th that was it. I didn't want the jewelry no more. I'm like, I'm over it. That's like, that was too much for me to handle. It was crazy. It was painful. It Did was it whistle weird. while you walked after that? Nah, I wish. That'd be awesome. <laughs> put it in an hole. Put out an owl. No, the hole. No, the something. hole. Yeah, yeah, uh, What'd you do with the hole? It just kind of closed up. It just kind of like feels like a fucking like a. He's growing watermelons now. No, yeah. <laughs> Shit. What's up? It's time to get up. What? Huh? The museum. What? We're going to the Christian Valley thing. Oh, cool, cool. Right now? Uh, in about 30 minutes. Okay. So basically, yes, right now. Jolly. Mm. What time is it? Time to get up. You bringing breakfast in bed? I wish, pal. One of these mornings. Mm. Oh boy. Hey, it's the wrong day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I gotta get out of here. Uh. Oh, they come in with my fuzzy fucking tribble. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing well, John. Let us touch the dollars. Right, right. Get a bowl. Um, very historic letter from Owen Jensen to Paul Rogers that oh. talks about all of the big name tattooers mm -hmm. from 1910 up to maybe 1950, 1960. Does he also talk about Vanish? No, 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 just Americans. Just Americans. Vanish died on the birthday of his grandson in the morning. 
Uh, and he saw him at the shop in the afternoon, he came and his grandfather was dead and he was really upset that he didn't get a present anymore. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, he actually kind of died at work in 1965. Yeah, he must have been And me. you would have no idea a stroke and heart um, attack? Actually, the, the, I have the death, a copy of the death certificate. Um, it doesn't say the reason why he died, just the time. Mm -hmm. um, but supposedly it was a stroke, but you never know. Mm -hmm. But there's no story of a health uh, disease like for a longer time right. or something. Or at least nobody knows of it, so mm -hmm. he probably just died of a stroke. Jetzt hast du ja heute Morgen äh, wieder einmal einen Vortrag äh, ja. gehalten. Ja. Ne? Ähm, Immer wieder neu. Genau. Ja. Ähm, ich meine aber äh, ein bisschen herausgesehen zu haben, dass es dir auf jeden Fall Spaß gemacht hat. Total. Und äh, jeder Vortrag ist ja auch irgendwie wieder ein bisschen neu, weil... Ähm, Oft sind es ja auch kleinere Gruppen, nicht immer, aber manchmal sind es auch kleinere Gruppen, so wie heute. Und da war das ja irgendwie auch so Live-Forschung äh, irgendwie. Ne? Dann saßen halt auf einmal eben Leute, ähm, die, die halt ähm, total Ahnung von Maschinen haben. Und da kommt man ins Gespräch, ach der weiß vielleicht, was, ob, was das für eine Maschine ist, die wahrlich da hat und so. Und ruft mal den an und fragt mal den. Und das ist halt genial. Ne? Man sitzt halt beim Vortrag und kriegt halt direkt irgendwie den Input, wie man bei gewissen Stellen weitermachen kann, wo man halt selber nicht weiterkommt. Ne? Und so genau so soll es halt sein. Und dafür macht man sowas ja dann auch. Ja. Nicht nur, um das Wissen, was man hat, äh, zu verbreiten, sondern eben auch neue Sachen zu generieren. Mhm. Es gibt ja dieses, diesen Mythos, dass wahrlich so Maschinen aus Amerika mitgebracht hat. Ähm, dann heißt es, er hat einige auch selber gebaut und wenn man dann Leute da hat, die sagen, hey Mensch, die Maschine sieht aus wie von dem und dem aus den Staaten, ähm, dann kann man halt der Spur nachgehen und dann eben verifizieren, ob das stimmt oder nicht. Ne? Und das ist natürlich ein super Gewinn. Ne? Yeah. I didn't realize how bad the scans were. Yeah, I mean, can They're you imagine awful. the first time, I see, just like you today, you saw the original, yeah. like, oh, well, this is how it actually looks like. <laughs> and a lot of times the tattooers, they'll, they'll see like something like the old book, the little blue one, yeah. and they'll try to match those colors because they think that's how he did it. Yeah. So it's like, he was trying to make it as bright as he possibly could. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the, 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 Not the, the reproduction, the reproduction just sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything gets like, ochre kind of Yeah, and actually, actually there are a couple of uh, um, segments where the color is actually missing completely. Yeah. So that's the wrong color. And yeah. It's like completely insane. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Completely insane. Like in flags, for example. Yeah. There's like a field missing. It's just blank, but actually it's red or something. Oh, you're so strange. Yeah. I mean, back then, back then, and they, I mean, it was first brought out in 81. I mean, even that it was brought out is a miracle already. Yeah. yeah. And back then, like the quality, nobody really cared so much, but nowadays there's a really high standard. Did the museum have the rights to that yeah. stuff then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. the, back then also it was published in cooperation with the museum. Like what had a real impact on me was the like the Spalding and Rogers um, reference you took, like to all well, well not just not about everything. <laughs> no, not yeah. everything definitely. But you had like these these skulls that are just dissolving into nothing. So the actual the the positive yeah. visual of the of the skull turns into the negative. You know, yeah. like with this kind of cheese biomechanic thing floating around it. Yeah, that really grabbed me by the ball so much, man. I loved it ever since I was exposed to the dream for the very first time. That was the first thing I thought. You know, Thanks, man. so and that is something that really was like, oh yeah, man, finally somebody who does that. And even in a very raw style, you know, it's, I, yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's pretty raw. I don't really polish anything. You know? No, and it's not supposed to be polished because if you polish it, it just it's not interesting anymore. You know? It doesn't even keep the integrity. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, some guys it blows. I don't know how they do it either. You know what I mean? Like, 
I, it baffles me. I just let go of trying because it's not where I feel comfortable. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, then, like, what's the fucking point? Yeah. My name's Matt Vancura. I'm working Elm Street Tattoo in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I mean, I don't really do a whole lot of it right now because I'm just trying to dig in at, at home and uh, build a clientele, but I worked at Invisible for a number of years and I have some clientele there. Um, most of my tattooing I did in New York, so um, it's, you know, something about Invisible, it's kind of like my second family or my second home and it always is like, like never skip a beat when I walk in, you know. So it's just good to see those guys. And I mean, I love New York, but I don't know if I could live there at this point in, in my life right now, but I um, already did that, you know. But, uh, you know, and generally, you know, it's good to be around people that you work with on a daily basis that inspire you, uh, which, which it is the case at Elm Street. Um, you know, and, but there's just always a different perspective or a little bit of a different vibe, different choices of music, you know, it's kind of, little refreshing to be in a different space from time to time but um, you know it's not that I need to go there to make ends or whatever it's more about the experience so. I mean it's just like any other tattoo job you're spending more time there probably than at home so you know you get close to people you know um, but you know most of those guys I can talk to just about about anything you know, we've had our arguments, we've had our beefs, we've had our good times, our bad times, you know. But, you know, all with kind of the same goals in mind, you know, we all wanted to, you know, build each other up and, and have a good place to work. So, um, it never really felt like I was, uh, you know, with just a bunch of guys I didn't really know. You know what I'm saying? It always feels like I'm working with, like, brothers, you know. And same thing, you know, with Elm Street. So it's just like, if I can't really feel like I fit in in a place, I don't really, it's not about like, you know, maybe there's a place with a really great name, with a really great reputation, I just may not fit with those people. So that's always the important thing. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's all the same thing really. But it is vastly different in just how it's set up, you know. It's almost in the same kind of neighborhood, but Invisible is a little bit more on the low key, you know. Um, but, I mean, there's a different kind of energy, but it's, they're both good. You know, I don't, I don't really make any bold comparisons about it, but it is a different kind of space, you know. Yeah, for a while Chris was there and, um, you know, I don't think either of the two situations really feel like you're in on TV. I don't, you know, I don't really know what it's like to be on TV, but it didn't feel like that at all. I mean, I think, um, you know, Oliver is a true tattooer, you know, I mean, he loves tattooing, you know, and he comes to work and does tattoos and hangs out with all of us right then and there. Um, and I think he'd be running the show the same way, meaning, you know, meaning the shop, the same way whether, you know, there was a television show or not, you know, he's the same guy. And um, same with Garber, you know, I mean, he's just a, a real tattooer and a really good dude. Uh, he was there the entire time that I worked there. He wasn't, but t I guess halfway of my time there, he came on. And um, I mean, it was just a pleasure working with him, man. I mean, so I don't. I think from the outside perspective, I think a lot of people might think that it ha has the same feeling as a TV show, maybe. I don't know, but it, it did, doesn't at all. You know, I don't really know the guys that, that put it together, but there's a, fr a friend of mine who's also the shop manager at Invisible. He set that up and, um, you know, he's doing his GBT thing. And um, so he wanted to sort of get his friends, you know, involved, you know, keep it within like his circle. And it was really cool to do that. I wish I was able to make it out for something like that, but I've never been to Japan. But um, 
it seemed like a lot of good people, a lot of talented people were involved in it, so. I mean, you know, as far as I can tell, it's probably the most opposite culture from, from mine. But, uh, you know, I don't really, you know, I'm, obviously I'm not Japanese, you know, and uh, I'm not trying to be. Um, but there's a lot of really, really strong images and a really um, incredible layouts for tattooing. You know, I, re I really feel like the tattooers from that side of the world really figured out how to do a, a fully thematic body tattoo. And, you know, integrating those kind of, you know, resources you know, I, I kind of take more Western imagery and mix it together, you know. I don't really want to be like a culture vulture, you know what I mean? Uh, I think it's okay to do that. And if you understand it and you, do, and you respect it, I mean, why not? But it's just not really me. Well, I got that originally when I was on tour with the band. And uh, we were just trying to like build morale and you know, I was all about that, so I kind of feel like most people that are interested in the PMA point of view probably generally are not living on the positive mental attitude until they are exposed to it. So, um, I mean, it's something that I just try to keep in mind just to, to make it through the day and, you know, stay productive, and, you know, not, not ruin, stay out of my own way as best I can, you know. I mean, I can be a kind of a difficult person sometimes, so. Just try to be more aware of that, be more mindful. Um, it's too bad I can't see it. It should be like tattooed in the air in front of me, but. <laughs> so, um, but I think in general, I really can't say that there's any reason to hate on a positive mental attitude. You know? Yeah. Great, thanks man, that's yeah. it. All right, cool. That was easy. Yeah, I hope so. You. Me. Do my tattoo now. Yeah. No, <laughs> come on here. <yeah. laughs> How are you doing it? So you're doing it. Okay, so what is this? This is my daughter? Uh -huh. birthday. So you want all that too? Yeah. Okay. And? Uh, this, this style maybe. A good bit different to that, you know? <laughs> but better, you know, like in many ways, just skipping the things like that. Okay, that's good. Spontan action or? Yeah. Ja? Ja. Na, 50-50 spontan so ein bisschen. Ne? Ja, auch spontan am Anfang der Tour. Ne? Okay. Ich bin der Fahrer von denen. Ach so, ja, das ist geil. Ja gut, dann ist das halt irgendwie, aber geil. Ja, gut. Und bist du zufrieden? Sieht doch geil aus, oder? Auf jeden Find Fall, gut. richtig gut. When we get back to the States and I run for president, I don't want to be Patrick, he's going to be my vice president. I don't want to be vice president. I want to what be do you like. Want to be? Depart head of blah blah blah, like Department Secretary of Secretary of State, yeah, head something of banking, like that. what? Nah, banking. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Park and Rec. This is going to be the head of park. When I get back to state and run for president after this tribal tattoo tour, this thing is going to be, I'm going to sign him Parks and Rec. Cut. Um, because all that's been my whole life. You know, I, I grew up on the streets since I was like 12 years old and I, I was a criminal and a drug addict and but uh, when I first was, got I, I did my first tattoo on myself when I was 12 and I first went my grandfather taught me how to draw 
and he died when I was 12 and I went to group homes and when I was in a group home there was a kid sitting at the table and he had a heart on his arm and I'd never seen a tattoo before and I'm like what is that and he's like it's a tattoo we'll show you how to do them after dinner and then they showed me but I could already draw so then I started tattooing because of that I think now people a lot of people are tattooing because it's cool it was not cool when I started doing it it was it was very outlaw but now you know models have tattoos and it's it's different yeah yeah bank robberies but well I was an armed robber but I've I've been busted for a, a lot of different crimes but my main convictions are armed robberies and bank robberies um, I was a ponytail bandit in uh, 1986 and 87 I robbed 29 banks um, I'd been in trouble before that I robbed pharmacies before that but I was like 17 and and then uh, I went away for a while and I actually escaped and then I went after I was on escape is when I robbed the banks and then went away and I tattooed in there and you know yeah absolutely I always sold with tattooers from the moment I got there one of the guys that taught me to tattoo on the street I was in prison with he went before I did um, John Horse Sandler who was considered one of the best black and gray tattooers in the world and he's forgotten now with everybody you know they have this interest in, not forgotten by there's a lot of people that still know him but you know he's forgotten in general in the history of tattooing but at one time he was considered the man and uh, we sailed together in Terminal Island and, I, well, I grew like I said, I, I, I didn't have any parental guidance, so I grew up on the streets. So when I went to prison, what prison did for me is I went at really formative age, you know, all my 20s. I spent all my 20s in prison. I got out when I was 30. And I learned everything. But one of the important things were to be responsible for my actions, to that my word was my bond, and that everything I said counted and that I had to follow through even if it was imperative to me or cost me at least and I kept my word and that's helped me in tattooing and it's helped me in tattoo history and, and it's 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 I would not trade my ex going to prison for anything I would if you asked me to redo it I'd go again just because to me it was the most valuable uh, thing I ever went through a absolutely Absolutely. I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for that, you know, it wasn't like, and I definitely wouldn't be president of the United States hadn't I gone. I'd probably, you know, be dead hadn't I gone to prison. Yeah, I, I've always played guitar. I play any stringed instrument, guitar, mandolin, but guitar especially, and, uh, uh, um, I played in bands before I went to prison and uh, then I wrote songs in prison and yeah and right now I have an album out the D Divine American Pariah and I wrote most of the songs in prison a couple before um, and uh, 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 that is my absolute more than tattooing I music's my favorite thing to, I, I, I love to play I love I love that everyone likes them and you know it's been good it's been real good well, well you know I hopefully good because I play in LA I play shows you know because promoting the album and stuff but I've never played a convention before and I, you know and it's just me and acoustic guitar it's not a big show or anything and I hope I hope that you know people like it you know I mean I I'm nervous, but I love to do it, so I love to share my songs with people, and I'm real excited to do it. The whole trip, basically, like I've done a couple tattoos, but I, it's not the most important thing to me. The music is the most important thing. I, I'm really excited to play. I think it'll be good, hopefully. Um, 
The best gig since the album came out was the last gig I played. A lot of the places I play are loud bars and the music's not loud, it's just me and the acoustic guitar. So, but the last place I played had really good sound. But the the good thing about the, when I, a lot of tattooers come to my shows, a lot, you know, and that, they've really supported me and that's been really good. And, um, yeah, so so this might be the best show. This could pro I I anticipate this could be the best show I ever get. I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm real excited. Um, I write. I'm a writer, and uh, and not not it's not an ambition I have, but I've always. I think if you're a good storyteller, you're a good writer. I, I don't think you can be one without the other because writing is nothing but storytelling on paper and Patrick had a fanzine or a magazine called Tribal Tattoo Fanzine and he asked me to write for it and I actually I think I wrote for every issue except the German issue and I would have written for that had I had a German something to write but he, every issue I did something in it I you know I'm real opinionated I'm for in my life period, but I'm really opinionated about tattooing period I, because I think it, it's really turned into an ego fest You know, I think that people forget you See what happens is when you become a tattooer your customers They treat you Like you're a messiah almost and if you believe that and you start believing your own bullshit, it gets to your ego and you actually, and the truth is it's, you're just a tattooer. You're just putting colored scabs on skin, man. You ain't, you know what I mean? Saving the world, you ain't curing cancer. You ain't, you dig? Like, like I think that, you know, carpenters are more important than tattooers. I always say this, you know, if, if there was a huge earthquake in Hamburg where we are fell and they were gonna rebuild Hamburg, do you think that the fucking officials would be like, hey, you know what we need right now? We need 30 really good tattooers to rebuild this city. No, it's so it's a useless, you know what I mean? Like electrician, you know, so I don't know where these guys get the egos they get, but I know part of it's from your customers. And I remember uh, when I was a kid, uh, someone told me that the minute you start believing your customers, you're dead. And, and I see it all the time. You know, I, I mean, these guys really, you know, not every, you know, there's lots of really beautiful people. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying everyone, but it's, it's really turned into a... <sighs> but I guess it's everyone's personal journey, you know what I mean? If, if being, having a big fat head is what, you know, you need right now, then, you know, so be it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, when I was a kid, it was like in the early '80s. Uh, uh, I was like 18, and, and uh, I was dating this stripper, and we we went downtown, downtown Los Angeles, this place called the Senator Hotel. It was it's like Seventh and Spring, and the way the Senator Hotel is is you go in the front of the hotel. There's a parking lot on the side of the hotel, but you go in the front of the hotel. And then there's a back part of the hotel and there's like a fire escape style bridge that crosses into the back. Though it's not a fire escape, it's just the way you get to the back of the hotel. And we would pull our car up in the parking lot and yell up for our drug connection. Hi-fi, hi-fi. So it's like 1.30 or two in the morning, I'm with this stripper and I'm thinking I'm all, I'm a little drunk and I'm yelling up, uh, hi-fi. And this old man comes out and he's leaning on the thing and he's just staring at me and, and I'm looking up at him and I start yelling hi-fi again and he tells me, hey kid, shut up or I'm gonna come down and put a hole in you. I'm like, yeah, fuck you. Hi-fi, hi-fi. And he looks at me for a second then he walks down, comes outside and just unleashes on me and he hits fucking hard. I mean, he fucked me up and I crawled to the car and, and, and I mean, I'm embarrassing this chick and the whole thing, you know, I'm, and I get in the car and I'm like, go, 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 <laughs> you know, and um, we go away and a couple of days later, uh, a friend of mine, the, 
says, hey man, I heard you beat up a famous writer with your face. I heard you beat his fa fist up with your face. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, yeah, B Charles Bukowski. And I'm like, who? I never even heard of him. And there's a poster of him that was out at the time, you know, and he, he, show he showed me the poster and that was the dude that beat me up in, in downtown. You know, and that got me interested, so I read a couple of his stories and everything. But yeah, yeah, he hits hard. Yeah. And then later, years later, people told me that he used to stay in that hotel. It was like a drunk hotel and, and that. So, you know, maybe he beat some writing into me, you dig? So when he hit me, and then I, all of a sudden I start writing, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, that did happen. Yeah, and I, I think one, somebody told me one time, you know, couple of things. One time some told me, yeah, some 60-year-old man beat up an 18-year-old kid. Let me tell you something. 60-year-old men are tough mother... That guy's a tough motherfucker, man. That guy was tough. He hit hard. He hit real hard. I wouldn't want him to hit me now. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, I got a bunch of good stories like that. But not with Bukowski. But... Yeah. Awesome. Yeah? yeah. Good? Good? Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say um, you read his stories, you know? Yeah, and I sing a song. And you do my song. Yeah. yeah. And we both fuck up. <laughs> you read the liner notes on the back? Yeah. Uh, Iris Mary, the girl that wrote those, is a. <laughs> Well, it's never get it's never gets old. Yeah, that's is good. Us us so machen. Yeah, genau. Tobak, Tobak kann das alles. Der ist äh, oh, Vater von Zwilling, der weiß ganz genau, wie man Trottel unter Kontrolle kriegt. Ja, dann bitte. <lacht> der hat das alles aufgebaut. Wir, ja. wir helfen ja nur. Wir schieben irgendwie drei Tische oder sowas zusammen. Ich trinke den ganzen Tag Bier. Ja. Perfekt. Wie war dann die Organisation für dich? Äh, stressig? Und, nee, ist, mir klar ist viel los, das geht. Es machen aber ja auch alle mit und alle sind sich bewusst, dass man halt unter unterschiedlichen Bedingungen arbeitet als in einem Laden, wo man jeden Tag arbeitet. Man muss ein bisschen improvisieren, hin und her schieben. Aber im Letz-, also letztlich und im Endeffekt machen die alle gute Tattoos hier und die Leute, die die kriegen, sind happy. Das ist mir am wichtigsten. Wenn alle nachher weiterfahren und zufrieden sind, einen guten Tag haben, ja. dann ist die ganze Arbeit egal. Ja, geil. Darum geht's nicht. Das ist der Wahnsinn. Also, keine Ahnung, ich finde, das ist wie so ein Traum-Event für einen Tätowierer. Also gerade für mich als jungen Tätowierer ist einfach Weihnachten, Ostern, Geburtstag, alles in einem Paket. Einfach die geballte Tattoo-Power. Wie? Ja. So, so würde ich es jetzt sagen. Ja, gar nicht. Es war überhaupt gar keine, gar keine stressige Woche. Nee, das ist also jetzt eine wirkliche Spaßwoche, finde ich. Also, keine Ahnung. Selbst die Arbeit, die angefallen ist jetzt als in Vorbereitung, war halt schon Spaß in dem Wissen, was da passiert so. ja. und was noch passieren wird. Also die Convention war jetzt die letzten zwei Jahre ein Highlight und da freuen wir uns alle drauf. Also ja. von mir aus vorsichtshalber gar keine. Ich habe einfach nur Bock auf das Ding an sich gehabt und wie auch immer das wird, wird man dann sehen. Das ist eh immer anders, damit ich ja. vorhabe. Ja. Ja. Ich plane. Ja, und ich meine, Patrick ist halt auch jemand, der wirklich ultra organisiert ist. Das merkt man so. Den musst du nur einen Tag kennenlernen, dann weiß er ganz genau, wie der, also dass der halt richtig funktioniert. So. Da weiß man schon, dass das keine äh, komplett unorganisierte Scheißtour wird, sondern dass er auf alles irgendwie achtet. Und in der Kommunikation, im Vorwege, das hat Robert halt hauptsächlich übernommen. Ähm, aber da, da hat man ja auch immer schon gehört, dass er, also, dass er alles einfach unter Kontrolle hat. Da kannst du dich darauf verlassen, dass da nichts irgendwie komisch wird oder fehlt oder so. Also. Bei so einem Line-Up in so einer Veranstaltung, wenn da irgendwas mit einer miesen Erwartung oder Voraussicht irgendwie läuft, dann liegt das höchstwahrscheinlich sowieso nur an einem selber, weil so eine Sache läuft eigentlich ja von alleine. Es sind alles gute Leute, die wissen alle, wie das geht. Und wenn man seinen kleinen Teil dazu beitragen kann, dass das irgendwie so reibungslos wie möglich irgendwie über die Bühne geht, dann finde ich, 
ist man das geringste Glied in der Kette und die Sache läuft. Ja, genau. Und das ist das Wichtigste. Das ist gut der Wir stellen eigentlich nur den Raum. Ja. 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 Ein Tätowierer aus Hamburg war hier, glaube ich. Oh ja. Ah ja, genau, das hatten wir mal besprochen. So, weil wir waren <lacht> ja. irgendwie neugierig, wer wird kommen, weil wir haben ja auch so viele Tattoo-Läden und eigentlich dann auch Tattoo-Interessierte. Und dann haben wir eigentlich nur darauf gewartet, dass die dann alle kommen. Ja, genau. Aber ja, das ist halt nicht, ausgeblieben. Aber, ja. Micha war da. <lacht> ja, ja. ja Micha war da. Relativ. Da habe ich auch, hab ich auch mit gerechnet, ja. aber das war es dann halt auch. Das war ein bisschen merkwürdig einfach so, ne? Ja. Oh, kann man eigentlich gar nicht kom kommentieren. Das ja. steht eigentlich für sich selber. So. Ja, weil ich glaube auch, dass es halt für Tattoo jetzt hier in Deutschland schon eine wichtige Veranstaltung ist. So. Also wo man auch Sachen sieht, Leute zu sehen bekommt, die man regulär nicht zu sehen bekommt. Und äh, ja, sollte man halt schon nutzen, wenn man interessiert an der ganzen Sache ist. Ja. Hey, also ist Scott Sterling erzählt was über Maschinen für Lau im Bus ja, hey. vor Ort. Freddy Corbin lässt sich Zeit für Walk-Ins, weißt du? Wo gibt's das? Ey, hallo? Ja. Du bist beknackt, wenn du nicht kommst. Ja. Ja, ja genau. Ja, das ist ja auch die Plattform, wo man es cool machen kann. In so einem kleinen Kreis, sag ich mal, auf so engen Raum. Da ist keiner auf dem Podium, ja. wo du dann so sitzt und dir einen Vortrag anhörst. Also, ja. Ja, da siehst du halt auch ein paar Gesichter zum ersten Mal und äh, kommst mit denen perfekt sofort klar. Also die ganze, wir hatten ja den ganzen Tag lang ein Problem mit einem beschissenen Power Supply. Es war die ganze Zeit <lacht> eins überall zu wenig. Von Glühbirnen. Ja, äh, sowas halt. Ne? Und darüber hinaus wird es das wird fast wie so ein Running Gag. So, und das äh, lockert irgendwie die ganze Situation auf, auch wenn man sich persönlich noch nicht kennt. Aber das, wenn das so der Connecting Point ist, dann ja, es ist, ich weiß nicht, es ist es einfach cool, so, wenn man irgendwie Leute kennenlernt in so einem normalen Umfeld sozusagen, weil für uns ist dieses das Arbeitsumfeld ja normal, das ist ja das, was wir jeden Tag machen und die halt genauso. Und wenn man das einfach mal von da nach da nimmt und in den Shop packt, das ist halt total cool. Aber mit dem äh, historisch wichtigen und künstlerisch wichtigen äh, Gewicht, wie das hier halt hat, das ist total geil. Das ist so eine einzigartige Sache. Ja, und man ist dabei, das ist geil. Ja, ja. Ja, wir haben uns vorhin darüber unterhalten im Laden, also mit einem, mit einem Kunden und da ging es darum so, Hey, du kannst hier im Internet alles angucken, du kannst über alles Informationen wahr oder falsch sammeln, dir irgendwas vermeintlich beibringen oder nicht. Oder du kannst einfach bei einer Sache mitmachen, bei einer hammergeilen Sache. Die ist vielleicht einmalig, vielleicht passiert die wieder in einer anderen Form, aber das ist das gerade, was passiert, da machst du mit und dann bist du ein Teil davon gewesen. Das ist cool. Ja. Das ist vielleicht oldschool, ist ein bisschen einfach, aber das ist eine Veranstaltung, die super ist. Da gehst du hin, da trägst du irgendwie zu bei. Und dann kannst du sagen, hey, ich habe mitgemacht. Das ist ein bisschen, ein bisschen easy eigentlich. Ja, und dass das überhaupt noch zustande kommt. Ne? Ja. Weil so, das, das, da haben wir mit Brad von darüber geredet. Dass so, es gibt so viele Leute, die geile Ideen haben und erzählen. Und dann, hey, dann machen wir das. Und dann machen wir das. Und hier noch und da noch. Und dann bleibt das bei einer geilen Idee. Weil die Umsetzung natürlich auch, natürlich auch schwierig ist. So. Aber Patrick, bald vor einem Jahr in Aachen, hat das erzählt, dass er das plant. Ja eben, das war innerhalb kürzester Zeit ja. und bumm, jetzt, ja, jetzt steht der Bus hier. Jetzt ist, ist das halt so, das, das finde ich richtig ey. geil. Ja. Das ist so äh, proaktiv, finde ich super. Mhm.